What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I'm back today to give you a review of the Nike Kobe 8 Pro Tro in this Venice Beach colorway. Originally released back in 2013, this Venice Beach Kobe 8 is one of the most beloved colorways of the silhouette to ever release. So fast forward just over a decade later and Nike brought these back technically in Pro Tro form, but you'll see there's actually not too many changes that they made on this shoe, especially when you compare it to some of the previous Kobe 8 Pro Tros that have already released. So these released on April 13th alongside a Kobe 4 and Kobe 6 with all three pairs representing a portion of Kobe Bryant's life. So the Kobe 6 Italian camo, that represents his early years being raised in Italy. And then the Kobe 4, that pays homage to his time in high school in Philadelphia. And then this one, the Venice Beach Kobe 8, this of course represents Los Angeles. So these retailed for a price of 190 US dollars or 245 here in Canada. And the official colorway for this shoe is stadium gray, metallic silver, and tour yellow. And just like any Nike Kobe release, these are very difficult to come by, especially here in Canada. And before I actually continue on with this review, keep in mind I'm wearing these strictly as a casual use sneaker. I know it might be blasphemous, but this is just a shoe that I want to rock casually. So if you're looking for an in-depth performance review on these on the basketball court, then I'm sure there's other channels on YouTube that have you covered. So diving into the details of this shoe, the majority of the upper is crafted using an engineered mesh and it has this tie-dye pattern to it, inspired by the graffiti and the artwork found in Venice Beach. Surrounding the front toe cap, we have this translucent overlay to give you additional durability and you'll notice how the eyelets are also reinforced with these grey coloured TPU overlays which gives you added strength in these targeted areas. Beneath this we have more of that colourful engineered mesh and then fused on top of the lateral side we have a reflective 3M swoosh which is outlined in yellow on the edges. And I found this interesting, unlike the previous Kobe 8 Pro Tros that released, those ones had an embroidered swoosh. So I guess they wanted to keep this OG colorway a bit more true to its OG form. Maybe that's why they opted for this flat swoosh instead. When you compare this to the medial side, we don't have this large swoosh here on the mesh. However, we have this synthetic grey panel and then glued onto the medial side, we have a yellow coloured swoosh. Wrapping around the back of the shoe, we have this teal colored TPU heel cup and we have Kobe Bryant's signature pressed onto the lateral side in orange. On the middle of the heel, this gray layer here is more of that synthetic material, but we have the Kobe Bryant logo pressed onto the heel underneath the heel cup and this is done in this reflective 3M finish once again. In terms of laces, so this pair only comes with one lace option and they're a flat style lace done primarily in yellow but has this dotted orange effect to it found throughout. Underneath this, the tongue is crafted using that same synthetic grey material that we saw on the heel of the sneaker. We have these perforations found all throughout, which definitely helps with the breathability of this shoe. And then on the top of the tongue, we have the Kobe Bryant logo, along with a snake wrapping around the edges. And one thing I was kind of disappointed in is that for the tongue of this shoe, it retains the OG tongue, being paper thin and flat. Unlike the previous Pro Tros that have released, for those Nike opted for a more puffy and padded tongue, which I personally think would be a lot more comfortable because I've owned pairs of the OG Kobe 8s. And let me tell you, this tongue can be an absolute killer. If you're not wearing thick enough socks, or if for some reason you're wearing no-shows, for example, these will absolutely cut up your skin. So again, I think it's just Nike trying to keep these true to OG form, but I personally would have liked more of a traditional tongue that has a bit more padding and a bit more softness to it. So the interior of the shoe, this is covered in this orange colored mesh and it's pretty decently padded. And as far as the insoles go, so this insole basically acts as a drop in midsole. And unlike the OG Kobe 8s that utilize Lunar Lawn, for this Pro Tro version, they've opted to replace it with Nike React instead. So as you can tell, because this insole acts as the midsole, it's extremely chunky, very, very well padded, and has this textured finish to it along with the Kobe logo on the heel. So the upper of this shoe, this sits atop this cup sole, which is surrounded by this teal colored foam. I'm not exactly sure what type of foam this is, probably some sort of EVA if I had to guess. And this helps to contain the sides of your feet and give you that added level of padding just around the bottom of the shoe. On the heel though, we have what looks like braille, but this is what Nike calls Kobe code. And if I got this correct, I'm pretty sure this translates to the words, chase perfection. And then turning the shoe over to the bottom, 
sides. So the outsole here is constructed out of a semi-translucent rubber and as far as the traction pattern goes, so in the middle and on the medial side we have this herringbone style traction pattern along with a circular pivot point and then on the lateral edge we have more of a triangular shape or snakeskin inspired traction pattern. This runs down the lateral side and towards the heel as well. And then in the middle of the heel, we have this exposed wedge of foam, again with another Kobe logo here, this one done in orange instead. And underneath the outsole, we also have this carbon fiber shank plate as well, and this is there to help with torsional rigidity and midfoot support. So that breaks down the look and the construction of this pair. And for those wondering about how these fit, so keep in mind I'm rocking these strictly for casual use. So my foot measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side, and I find that the Kobe 8 is a pretty narrow fitting sneaker, so I went up half a size to a size 10 and a half. It fits me slightly long lengthwise, not enough that it bothered me, but the width of the shoe is perfectly fine for me. So I would definitely not want to go true to size for these, just because my feet are a little bit wider, but I feel like if you have a narrow or even a normal width foot, you could go true to size in these, but keep in mind, they might be a little snug straight out of the box. Moving on to the comfort, so these feel pretty firm underfoot. I'm assuming that's because I haven't played ball in them, meaning I haven't broken in this shoe. But based off of my limited experience wearing these, yes, you can feel the Nike React foam under your foot, but generally speaking, it's a pretty firm and low to the ground feeling sneaker. This makes sense considering the Kobe 8 was meant to be a very lightweight shoe, which while it still is, I've seen other reviews that have mentioned it's a little bit heavier than the OGs, but nonetheless, for casual use, it's still extremely lightweight. You feel very connected to the ground, it feels very stable, but if you're looking for a shoe that's extremely soft and pillowy, then the Kobe 8, at least this version, is not it. Finally, in terms of the quality and craftsmanship, so in terms of material quality, unfortunately it's all just synthetic materials, which makes sense from a performance standpoint, but if you're looking for a more premium take on a Nike Kobe sneaker, this unfortunately is not it. However, the overall build of the shoe was okay. I really had no major flaws on my pair, the stitch job was solid, no major glue stains that I could see. The paint job was good as well. There were some very small minor stains along the heel cup, but other than that, there really was nothing for me to complain about. So with all that out of the way now, let me toss these on feet, I'll lace them up for you, and I'll show you guys how these look. I don't live in Venice Beach, but this is probably the closest I'm going to get to Venice Beach in a long, long time. Like I mentioned in the beginning, this is one of those iconic Nike Kobe sneakers. So it shows you nothing really is sacred when it comes to Nike. There's always a chance that your favorite grail sneaker will eventually be brought back. And like I also mentioned, in many ways they kept this more true to the OG than they could have, which I think will definitely make some people happy. But the biggest thing I think they missed was having a more padded and plush tongue. This, at least from a casual use perspective, selfishly speaking, would have made the shoe that much more comfortable. At the end of the day, I'm buying these strictly for the colorway. This is just a very bold, vibrant, and fun colorway that I'm sure will get a lot of wear this summer. So let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about this Nike Kobe 8 Pro Tro and this Venice Beach colorway. For anyone watching, were you lucky enough to grab these for retail? Did you take an L and buy these on the secondary market? Or just not your thing and you pass on them altogether? As usual, if you guys enjoy this review, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, check out my X account at sean.co spelt out, and visit my website at seango.ca. So thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy this review and hopefully it helped you in some way. I appreciate the continued love and support and I'll catch all of you in my next review.